I'm Barbara Jackert and I'm a, a custom dressmaker. I've been working for about 25 years and I'm also an author. I've written two books including Sewing for Plus Sizes and uh, I also wrote for a number of the uh, national sewing magazines. I lead a pretty uh, average life um, but I learned from a customer of mine who last year who is a um, astrophysicist that I'm a geek too only I'm a sewing geek. <laughs> Well, sewing, sewing is, is unique, I think, because it's, it can be intellectually challenging because you have to know a lot of actually pretty picky information, a lot of technical information on how to adjust patterns and rotate darts and a little geometry and a lot of information on fiber content. I mean, every, every profession, every set of skills has its, its set of information that you need to learn. But once you got it, and once I'm actually doing my sewing, especially I find this for handwork, I just am in the zone. The rest of the world goes away. I listen to my classical music. My cat bugs me occasionally, but I'm just sitting there sewing and all my worries, all my anxieties, everything just floats away because I'm in that zone and I really love it. Well, one of the reasons I wrote Sewing for Plus Sizes was that as I, my kids were little and uh, you know my husband was working all the time, I was home, I was running my business, raising the kids and looking after him and I always sewed my own clone clothing and I gradually got bigger and bigger because of a rare medical condition but I always had the clothes I needed so if we were going to the British Embassy for a reception with my husband for his work I had a nice dress to wear. If I was uh, taking my daughter to school, um, I had to have a PTA meeting, I could look like the rest of the moms and dads. Uh, if I was doing something physical, like out in the backyard digging a hole, I had comfortable clothing and durable things to wear that didn't look really peculiar. And I never thought about that. I was just busy, just living my full life. And then one day I was in my local mall and this guy stopped me and asked me where I bought my outfit. And I told him, oh, I didn't buy it, I made it. And he was just blown away. He, he couldn't believe it. And he said, the reason he asked was he had a fiance who, uh, you know, she had her home-based business. She was a great gal, he loved her to bits. But she seldom left the house because she had nothing to wear or felt that she had nothing to wear. And you know, I thought to myself, if I didn't know how to sew, I would be stuck at home wearing a bed sheet toga. And I couldn't go to that embassy reception. I couldn't take my daughter to ballet without feeling embarrassed or out of place. And unfortunately, the ready to wear world doesn't do much for us for a variety of reasons for plus size clothing. And in fact, in my area, which is saturated with retail, there is not one store that carries my size of clothing of any kind, not one. So in a way, sewing for plus sizes is almost like an act of social activism and also it involves developing a plus size aesthetic because you know, we are bombarded with thousands and thousands of images every day in the media, television, newspapers, um, on the internet of unusually tall and thin women. And in fact, sometimes they aren't even real images because they've been photoshopped like crazy, they actually cut out hunks of their body with Photoshop to make everyone look t thin. They stretch them out lengthways to make them look taller. And we tend to kind of think that that's normal. And we, of course, think that that's beautiful. But if you think about it, if you're plus size, you have people in your life who know that you're beautiful, your husband, your mother, your children. So I think when you're designing for plus sizes, for yourself, for my customers, for other people, or my students, you need to think about what looks beautiful on you and you develop a new set of aesthetics. Well, when I was growing up in the 60s when I was in high school, almost all women learned to sew, a little bit. They might not have liked it, but they learned enough to do mending, uh, simple repairs, uh, maybe they made their own clothing. And back in the day, home sewing just tried to be as good as couture sewing. So it was a very high set of skills that if you got into it, you would want to acquire. And um, since then, of course, we don't have home ec in the schools anymore. And if there is home ec, they're making incredibly simple little projects and not really acquiring a high level of, of skills. So that's a bit of a problem. And the other thing that's happened is I think it's honestly getting harder for us to read instructions in a book because we just don't do that so much. We learn it more from video, from the internet, and I think that's really great because if you think about it, 
A couple of centuries ago, not that long ago, say during uh, the Middle Ages, people learned crafts, like if you were a stonemason, you didn't read about how to be a stonemason in a book because there wasn't any. You learned from a master mason and you practiced it. And that's exactly what Craftsy is doing. So I have an opportunity and I'm really grateful for it to teach my students the skills that I've acquired from another dressmaker who was highly skilled and the skills that I've acquired in my last, oh, 45 years or more of sewing and in the last 25 years of working as a custom dressmaker.